This is the Emerson home that is still in the family today. One of the individuals that was part of these conversations, we call them the Concord Conversations where we're not talking about the weather and the hockey teams and that, right? We're not having problem conversations. We're having vision-based conversations, concord conversations, conversations at a new level of awareness. One of the, this man pictured here, he was, he was the handyman. Harvard graduate, um, came from a home of pencil, uh, pencil makers, Henry David Thoreau. And this was a bit of an elitist group at the time. And so Henry David Thoreau, although he was a graduate of Harvard, he was not quite considered in the class. So he was just able to sit outside of the room and listen in. And he would chime in and eventually they just couldn't deny this, this young man's wisdom. And so he was invited to sit at the table. But after a short period of time, Henry David Thoreau said, I'm tired of talking about this. I would love to enter into a living experiment to really test these laws and these ideas and apply them. That's really what I'm inviting you into this weekend and perhaps beyond is an experiment to apply these five tools into your life to see what you're truly capable, what's truly capable of. Henry David Thoreau said, I want to learn to suck the marrow out of aliveness. And he rented a little piece of land from Emerson next to Walden Pond, and he built himself this home. And he entered into an experiment, which ended up being a two-year, two-month, two-day experiment where he lived deliberately. He wasn't a hermit. He went into town. He was a, he was a surveyor of land. He surveyed many of the rivers in the areas in the, in the Concord and Massachusetts area. But he wanted to confront life and what it had to teach him. He said, I was scarcely in the woods for, I, I, I'd been scarcely in the woods for two weeks when I realized that I had been taking the same path every day to the pond for his daily bath. And he said, if I, a student of transformation, a student of transcendentalism is taking the same physical path every day. How many times am I taking the same pathway in my mind? And not only do I want to be a great surveyor of the land, but I want to be a great surveyor of my mind to notice what I'm noticing realizing that I'm driving to work the same way. How many of you sat in the same spot today as you sat yesterday? Not to judge, to notice. We're taking the same pathways in our actions, in our thoughts, in our emotions over and over and over again, which perpetuates our results. He said, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had never lived. We heard in a video yesterday, the greatest regret of people on their deathbed is not the things they did, it's the things they didn't do. I don't think any of us wants to get to the end of life and, hmm, did I really live? Did I really discover my passion? Did I really live into my purpose? Jeff and I first visited Concord, and that's a replica of Thoreau's home, walking through the Emerson home, walking around Walden Pond we visited last year to, to feel the energy. And you walk into that Emerson home and where those conversations take place, and you can just feel the rasa, you can feel the energy and the conversations that took place there. And we were actually just there again, less than a month ago, expanding our awareness. At the end of his experiment, two years, two months, two days, he wrote a famous um, essay called Walden. And at the end of that, there's a code 
of how it works, of how do we transcend our current conditions and circumstances? How do we go beyond? And we're going to study that code here this morning. Henry David Thoreau, I turned 45 last month. Henry David Thoreau died at 44. None of us knows, none of us knows how much time we have. And I believe that invitation into an experiment to truly Ignite your passion. Live your purpose. There's no better time than today to decide for that. Walking there and walking through the home, it's in order to increase my awareness of how it works, how do we harness these laws in service of a life that we would love? Henry David Thoreau writes this, if one advances confidently in the direction of their dream, endeavoring to live the life they are imagining, one passes an invisible boundary. All sorts of things begin to occur that never otherwise would have occurred. One begins to meet with a success unexpected in common hours. New, universal, and more liberal laws begin to establish themselves around this person or the old laws are rearranged in one's favor. Nevertheless, one begins to meet with a license of a higher order of being. What does that mean? It's a code. It's a code to understand. Just like a master electrician wants to understand the laws of electricity and be a master, So they can harness that. We want to increase our level of mastery, not perfection. Our level of mastery of working with these laws. So let's unpack this. The first key word inside of this code is the first simple two-letter word, if. We have all been given free will. Each one of us has been given free will. You're invited into an experiment. At the end of the day on Sunday, you get to decide if you're ever going to think about this again. The laws are still at work in your life, but you get to opt in. You get to decide if. If one advances confidently. Advances means move. I have to move. If one advances confidently, confidently, there's an energetics with the word confidence, wouldn't you say? How does a confident person sit? Go ahead and sit how a confident person would sit. We know that. If one advances confidently, there's a beingness, an embodiedness in that word confidence. If I'm advancing confidently in the direction of their dreams. It means I have to have a destination in mind, a vision, a goal. You've started the process of creating that vision. If one advances confidently in the direction of their vision, you're going to live another three years anyway. Why not set the sails to a destination? If one advances confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavors to live the life they have imagined. I love the word endeavor because it means to try, to attempt. It doesn't mean to be perfect at it. None of us will be perfect at this. If one advances confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavors to live the life they have imagined. When I made the decision to go to work as a highly successful business owner, I was living from the life I imagined. How does the version of you and your vision, how do they show up in their lives? The reason I have a picture of Chris Hadfield, famous Canadian astronaut. Great example of endeavoring to live the life he imagined. At nine years old, he um, saw rockets. They were playing with rockets, and he said, one day I want to be an astronaut. 
At that time, there wasn't even a Canadian space program. The conditions and the circumstances are saying, this isn't even possible, get a new dream. Your conditions and your circumstances might be saying your dream is not possible right now. But Chris Hadfield, at nine years old, he had a dream. And he started to think, what would an astronaut eat for breakfast? And he starts eating like an astronaut. And he starts studying like an astronaut. And he's doing what he can with what he has from where he is, the version of you inside of your vision. Coming from that, living from that, before your conditions change. Not waiting for your conditions and circumstances to change. We live from it now. One passes an invisible boundary. What's that invisible boundary? It's the invisible boundary. It's a boundary that's been made up by our thinking. And we all have an invisible boundary. The universe doesn't have a boundary. Spirit doesn't have a boundary. Our thinking has a boundary. It's my thinking that has created the boundary of my current results. One passes an invisible boundary and they meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Common hours would say, singing is now illegal. You cannot grow a singing business when singing is banned. How many of you would agree with that? That would be very common hours. There's things that we think we can and cannot do based on conditions. Common hours is what society has said is possible, what our conditioning has said is possible. As we are advancing confidently in the direction of our dreams, endeavoring to live the life we're imagining, we will be met with a success unexpected in common hours. I'm going to start a daycare. It's going to cost me $200,000. And Frida and Esther will tell you it turned out to be much more than that. And I have no money in the bank. Common hours would say, get a new dream. These are some pictures of some of you in this room where conditions and circumstances said your dream is not possible and yet you've been advancing confidently in the direction of that dream. And story after story after story. But we, the way that we do that is by working with the law, by mastering our thinking. Common hours has a thinking to it. So what is mastery thinking? What is mastery thinking? Common hour thinking versus mastery thinking. Another way to say that is condition-based thinking versus vision-based thinking. Most of us have been trained to think from our conditions, to look to our conditions for permission about what's possible. So here's some examples of condition-based thinking versus mastery thinking or vision-based thinking common hour thinking. I have to wait for the right time. You heard me say I was waiting two years, two, two years for it to be more comfortable. Now's not a good time. How do we shift that thinking to produce a new result? I make time for what's important to me. Leanne, when you came here in April, and you said, I'll never have time. I can't make the calls on that day and that time. It doesn't work. But you were producing some results that you weren't happy with. You had a vision. And you made a decision. I'm doing this anyways because my results matter to me. And you've never missed a call that you thought your condition said, I'll never be there. I make time for what's important to me. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. What would I love? And what's a step I can take? 
what's a step I can take? Common our thinking. What will other people think? If I pursue this dream, what will others think? This was on my mind. I'm going to leave a corporate job with benefits and a pension plan, and it's reliable, and I've got a family to support, and I'm just going to walk away from that into the unknown. What are my parents going to say? And if we're not aware that we're even having those thoughts, we stay in our patterns. The reframe of mastery thinking in that moment is I am the highest authority on my life. Diana Nyad, when she, re, she took the dream off the shelf and said, I'm going to try this one more time. People doubted her. Up until that point, every time she attempted, the news stations were following her. And that last attempt, they said, Diana, we don't think it's going to happen. We don't think it's possible. We're not following this story anymore. People will doubt you. I am the highest authority on my life. I'll wait till I have the whole plan. Once I know exactly how I'm going to achieve this vision, then I'll make a decision for it. Then I'll start. Mastery thinking. I do what I can with what I have. Can you see how both of these thoughts lead to a different outcome? Our thoughts create our emotions or our feelings. Our feelings create our actions. Our actions create our results. What if I lose my benefits? The benefits of living my dream is the greatest benefit to me. What if I fail? What if I go for this and I fail? The risk of regret is the greatest risk of all. So in your journals, what condition have you been very interested in lately? You've been having some common hour thoughts. I can't because this is what feels like it's in the way. So we're not going to spend a ton of time here, but go ahead and make a note of maybe there's some of those that have been resonating with you. What condition have you been interested in? Just take 60 seconds here. How does that feel as you're thinking about that? Notice what you're noticing. Is it expansive or contractive? You've been thinking that thought anyways. You just haven't had an awareness that you've been thinking that thought. We want to notice it for the purpose of transforming it. And we're really going to work on transforming that thinking tomorrow.